Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. It is episode 125, our ninth anniversary. I am Zaki Hassan. That's right. <laughs> hey, Assalamualaikum, Zaki. Welcome. Zaki is joining us today, folks. Uh, Assalamualaikum, <laughs> listeners. Zaki is joining us as a return host. Uh, so, of course, you know that Zaki and Perbez founded the show Diffuse Congruence in 2013, just so happened to be October. So we're celebrating the ninth anniversary of the podcast and uh, thought it'd be fun to bring back Zucky. And, we're we're and making amends up. after our horrific breakup. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, what's the, what's, Are you ready to say sorry? What's the analogy? What's, what's like the big breakup where people... Laverne and Shirley? I, I think that's the one we referenced last <laughs> that time. We, did last time? <laughs> like, we need something new. Like, uh, uh, does, does Omer know the Laverne and uh, Shirley story? Maybe, I think I... Uh, they I, they, I they weren't on speaking terms by the okay. end of the show. Yeah. yeah. Which, and I think the whole last season they recorded like separately yeah, yeah. and it was just really... No, but aren't there some, aren't there some like where they broke up and they tried to get back together and then... It was even uglier the second time. Van Halen? Time. I don't know. Van Halen and David <laughs> Lee Roth. Right. I mean, yeah, that's that probably works. another example. Probably. Yeah. Um, so, I'm sure and, there's others. Uh, yeah. n- none of that is true, by the way. We're joking. Yeah, it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's completely amicable. <laughs> totally. So uh, yeah. anyway, how have you guys been? It's been it's been a while since we posted a show. I think it was I think it was um, Labor Day. Labor Day where we had um, a sh- an episode with Dr. Muzamo Siddiqui, yeah. um, which was really, really great for, for me and for Perez as an experience. Uh, but that was a while ago, so we're definitely due for catching up. That's but how right. are you guys? Uh, I'm doing well, yeah. I know it's good to have Zucky back, and like Omar already said, uh, we thought we would uh, commemorate our ninth anniversary, and uh, it so also happened that it's the 125th episode. I'm not sure if that's an actual anniversary or not, but um, ninth anniversary nonetheless, Zucky. Um, you have a, you have far more uh, gray hairs than you did when you when, when we first started the show. But uh, I have far more kids than I did when I started the show. So that's <laughs> the gray hairs are an exponential representation of that. What was the count in 20, 2013? Do you remember? I mean, of course. When you when we started, yeah. it was three. Okay, and now mashallah so, five. So so there's two more since uh, then. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, I, I I think back to that period. I think we've we I think we've covered this on 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 air, but. Uh, you know, the genesis of the show and what we started and, and uh, why we started doing what we did. Um, and again, at that time, you know, the uh, space was, I mean, nearly empty. Like there was ba- ba- barely any other Muslim podcast. Um, I think maybe there was one other show at the time. And then even that was short lived. So, you but know, uh, you, I yeah. wanted your thoughts too, Omar, yeah. as a listener. Well, I mean, uh, um, I mean, I've always been a, uh, uh, I mean, Zaki was doing the, the the movie film podcast as well, kind of in parallel. Um, but between this and that, that's kind of how I got into podcasts. Mm-hmm. It was and, and it's very very timely because Serial, the the Serial podcast came out I think in 2014, um, and of course now we know that's right. Eight absolutely. years later, you know Adnan Sayed is is uh, released from prison, which is really interesting, right? Because he's yeah. he's essentially been cleared, but. Yeah, I mean, look at the time between serial podcasts now. It feels like a long time. But and and this show and your other podcasts, like you predated serial, right? Yeah, crazy. Mm-hmm. It's I mean, it is. It's it's funny because I've seen so since then. You know, just using arbitrarily when movie film started, and now ten years, uh, I've seen so many people be like, "All right, I'm starting my own podcast," and then they kind of. Uh, they 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 do their thing for a little while and then it falls away and i you know i think i think the the internet is littered with abandoned podcasts the way it's littered with abandoned blogs mm-hmm. right? so it's so a graveyard def- of podcasts really you know there's quite project. a few you know they they call it uh, uh pod fade oh there's a term for that where it just doesn't you know, nobody's like all right this is our last episode but they just kind of like stop doing it yeah. and obviously because it requires time and effort and energy and i'm not judging anybody who who ends up letting something fade away but you but uh my point is with this show the fact that you guys have kept it going in nine years nine years is an achievement it really is i mean that because because there's plenty of shows that just they just gave up the ghost after you know yeah well there's there's a couple reasons for that run is obviously the commitment of the folks making it but just in terms of competition too right there's so much there's so much content out there that um you know, you have to kind of pick and choose where you're going to spend your your time, right? So a lot of shows just kind of faded because 
they just maybe didn't have the what was the the podcast equivalent of, of eyeballs, right? Yeah, listeners, ears, <laughs> ears. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the podcast equivalent of eyeballs. So, ears. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're running out of appendages. Yeah, that is awesome. How have you um, been, Pervis? I, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, you know, I, I had some reflections just to kind of situate where we are and you know in time and place i think you you, you, like you mentioned we're obviously recording this in october our last episode was september um feels much longer than that um but nonetheless um i think there are few things that i wanted i mean there was one like one particular event that i did want to sort of reflect on just personally i mean again this is totally organic i know i haven't run any of this by either of you but um you know like uh, we, we, we lost, you know, a, a tremendous scholar in Dr. Yusuf al Qardawi, And I just wanted to, as, as someone who benefited greatly from his work, um, both in the English language and then when I was working on my Arabic, um, you know, his book um, on Fatawa was also one that I would just read just for the sake of practicing my Arabic reading. Um, so, but, you know, his book, obviously, The Lawful and Prohibited, I imagine, you know, was... At, you know, I'm, I'm sure either of you have, or both of you have either looked at it or it was uh, lining your bookshelves at, 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 at one point. I mean, it was extremely dis- or widely dis- uh, disseminated into the English language. And, uh, you know, growing up as a teenager, you know, a lot of the legal opinions that, 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 that he put forth in that book were relevant and spoke to young people, spoke to people living in the West. So, um, you know, I, th- I think it's easy to say that, uh, um, that you know, Sheikh Karadawi was probably one of the most sort of widely read, disseminated, um, you know, beloved by across people from across the ideological, you know, ideological spectrum, uh, recognized him as a legal authority, as someone who was worth listening to. So, um, you know, certainly. Yeah. yeah and, and 96 years old. So right. Mashallah, that's quite, quite, uh, quite a run there. <laughs> so, yeah, Mashallah. Yeah. Obviously I mean, obviously, a you, you know, very influential, impactful name. And, uh, you know, we don't, we, we, nobody sat there and quantified the impact of X scholar, Y scholar on Muslims in America today. Yeah. But really there's a handful of folks right. who like we're all indebted to in a way for, for Islam in America today, you know, and, and now you can kind of see, you can kind of, as, as, as we raise our kids, you, you know, there's, we're, we're, we realize this even more and more that like the groundwork that those original, some of those scholars right. did. Right. And you can include him, even though he wasn't American. American, right? There no, were, through books and through literature oh, yeah. and all, right? You can yeah. definitely yeah. Um, attribute some of that, some yeah, of that yeah. In, you know, U.S. impact. No, I think I, there. it wouldn't be it wouldn't be you know um, too far, uh, or, or it would, you know, it, we, we, you know, one could say that it, any of us who came of age in the '90s, um, you know, in, in America, that book was certainly one that was hu- you know really influential on us. So. Um, and even though it was just a book of legal opinions, it wasn't a book on, you know, movement or, you know, da'wah or anything like that. It's just that, it, you know, it just created a, a, a sort of a, um, we were, we, we, we got introduced as young people to the type of scholarship that was out there, you know, within our tradition, uh, even before people formally studied the tradition. So um, that, like, I think that's why I wanted to call attention to it in particular. And obviously, like you said, Omar, um, certainly, you know, Sheikh Qaradawi, numerous visits to the United States, hugely influential to, uh, on many of the thought leaders that we, mm-hmm. you know, you know, listened to, grew up listening to. So. Um, whether it was directly or indirectly, certainly, I think Sheikh Qardawi fell, you know, falls in in that kind of category of people, like you said, yeah. you know, for those like Islam for 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 Muslims in America and Muslim intellectual history mm-hmm. in America. So, yeah, I, I wanted to call attention to that. So I, I think you know we we certainly lost a tremendous scholar there, um, and yeah, I mean here we are also as far as the Islamic calendar goes. This is the month of Rabi al Awal, so you know this is uh, oftentimes. Um, you know, there's, you know, maulid and uh, events going on where, you know, people talk about the prophet and things like that. So, I, you know, hopefully all of us, whether the three of us here, listeners, have had a chance to go check out some events and whatnot in the community. It's also really been interesting to see that certainly here in the Bay Area, but I imagine, you know, across across the country, um, people are people are really wanting to get back into community space again. 
Hmm. And, you know, a, there's been a couple of events. One I tried to get into was also connected to Rabi al um, and it sold out. And then this past weekend, luckily I got, I got space, but, um, you know, and, and for the family, but it was also sold out after I got tickets. So just goes to show you, I think people are really yeah, wanting I mean, to get I, back. I think I started noticing it last Ramadan, like in Ramadan. That was when events started again. Yeah. And now it's. Now it's like there's just a plethora of events. Yeah, yeah. It's, and we're speaking about the Bay Area experience, but I'm sure I'm no, sure this is national as well. I would say even more so because California has been a little slow in, in reopening. Ah, okay. So I would say arguably there's been more events for a longer period of time in other parts of the country. And it's a lot of yeah. like making up for lost time. Like I know I have a 15-year-old. And so some of those, for, those formative years from 12 to 15 were really kind of – or 13 to 15 were really kind of COVID years. Yeah. And um, – it's like I feel like those years need to be made up because that was like completely lacking in terms of community and in terms of mushtiv and mm-hmm. in ter- terms of uh, halakas and things like that That's that right. I think are super important at that age. Yeah. So um, I'm sending my daughter to uh, one of the Minna camps in December. I'm looking oh, yeah. forward to giving her her first experience there. Um, God, Minna, a Minna camp in December brings back so many memories. Yeah. So, so, so she's was never been because a touchstone she, in she my life. She was just before when COVID started. She had she was twelve. Yeah. Right. So right. I'm looking forward to her having that experience, and hopefully, you know, if she gets even one good relationship out of it, I'll be I'll be thrilled. Yeah. Is is it far from home? Like, is it, is it uh, nearby? So they have they have them all over. Uh, like I never went in California. As a kid. I never yeah. went. So this is um, some a, a mutual friend of ours, Omer. Mm. He he was just giving me. We were talking just about parenting, really, and he he gave me this, and and you you also had been telling me about it. But um, so between the two of you, I was like, I got to As soon as this opportunity comes up, I'm going to take it. So yeah. it's in December um, during the holidays, and they're all over the country. I think there's six of them. Um, so yeah, I'm curious. I don't. I really. I've just heard great things, but uh, it's first first time uh, for my kids. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm. I'd love to hear from Zaina. Uh, um, your, I'm sorry, your daughter. You can edit that if you yeah. want. But um, yeah, I'd love to hear about her experiences because again, you know, this, it was such a it was such a keystone and growing up for me attending Mena camps and there was such a formative, you know, formative or th- those were formative events in my life. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm curious if it's still, if they still kind of, you know, hold that kind of, uh, a, a bit of an influence on young people who, who do attend. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I guess, you know, and then I, I, I looked to Zucky to kind of bring us up to date or catch us up to speed on what's been happening in social media and the Muslim <laughs> the, the social Muslim media. Twitter, you Muslim Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. You're, you're kind well, of our, I, I stay away from Muslim Twitter. That's, that's one thing I've learned. Um, <laughs> but, 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 you, but you wade into like other sort of, you know, uh, pitfalls of, of, of Twitter, whether it's the Snyder fans or the, or the uh, you Star know, I'll, Wars. I'll tell you what, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I love Twitter. Yeah. I, I used to be a big Facebook guy for, you know, from 2006 early on till all the way to maybe 2018. And that, and then some. I just pivoted in 2018, 2019 to Twitter. Yeah. Um, and then it got to the point where, like, my news and like my sports highlights. I didn't. I didn't go to ESPN. I went to Twitter to see who won the basketball game or movie news or whatever. All the different things. I was interested in following politics, but it got. It did get a little out of hand to the point where I actually deleted it off my phone because I'm like, um, it's very easy to get on Twitter too. It's addictive. Um, but I actually deleted social media off my phone um, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm, I'm just kind of trying to find that right balance, right? I still have, of course, my accounts on my PC. Um, but yeah, I, I, obviously there's been some hot topics like uh, the election coming up and there's yeah. been uh, the economy is kind of on this, on this teeter, teetering, if you will. Uh, so a lot, a lot going on kind of in the world, right? Uh, politically, economically, uh, socially, there's the stuff going on in Iran. Uh, I know that's getting attention um, in my even in my company. Like my 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 execs have have called out called that out. Um, I do work for a bit of kind of a very uh, DEI centric diversity, yeah. equity, inclusion centric company. Same, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're so that's that's been top of mind as well. I mean, you know, Zucky, I, I guess on a broader like just just. just you know, making some observations on a, on a broader scale about social media in general. Um, I just feel like things have become so tribal, um, oh, yeah. you know, and that yeah, certainly sure. has played out in our politics, but I, you, I just, it's so exacerbated on social media now. I think the, the underlying presumption 
of social media was this notion that we're going to create a global town square and everybody right. can can talk and come together and that has been worn out by human nature like i could have told you way back in the day that's not gonna work right nobody asked me but well, well we got excited by the in 2011 that was like the first time that whole town square thing happened in the, like with sparking Tahrir mm, Square where social media played a role revolution. and so that got us that got people excited about the potentials and what you're talking about is more like super interesting it's all the, some of the some of the toxic stuff has taken over I, I, well and the thing is you know I I have been teaching long enough now where I I was there I was teaching before social media and after so I remember talking about Facebook as it became a thing and I remember it being in my media class and and God is my witness I said when it first started, I said, it seems interesting, but we need longitudinal data to know how it's going to shake out. Well, we've got longitudinal data, and it's done nothing but make people meaner, um, uh, like Pervis said, more tribal, you know, more dug in. And, and, and part of it is because discussions are no longer allowed to happen, and this is going to sound, you know, uh, cliche, but in a, in a safe space. In, in a in, over coffee or something like that, you know, because everything is on display. So it's not, so when people are talking to each other on social media, they're not talking to each other. They're talking to their followers, mm. and they're kind of like dunk, mm -hmm. and they're you know like like Maximus in Gladiator. Aren't you entertained? You know, and it's it's the dunk economy. I say this all the time, and and that's what social media is. So there's no there's no uh, uh, um, impetus. For actual meaningful discourse, it's just it's. I mean, you know, the 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 GOP uh, uh, House Republican account is like a troll account. It is, you know, uh, John Fetterman, who you know I like in that in that contest, his entire campaign or a big chunk of it has been just dunking on Doctor Oz. Yeah, where does so where does the cancel stuff come in? Like you're you're talking about kind of the look at me. Um, I don't know what, how. What, what's the what, what? What would you label that as? Like, well, like, where does I the think, cancel culture? I think Zucky was saying. I mean, I, I think I think it's a great question about cancel culture. But I think to Zucky's point, um, nuance is lost, right? Because no right. longer is nuance rewarded. Yeah. What is rewarded, and what is reward? Followers, likes. You know. Uh, uh, um, you know. Uh, what's the word going viral engagement engagement thank you right. eyeballs engagement. and ears if you will <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> there you go good 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 one um so and nuance doesn't get you that what gets you that is again feeding the base is you know making uh right i mean just it, exaggerated it's, exaggeration yeah, it's it's about you saying something and all your followers going yeah you tell them right mm -hmm. and it feels nice Right, I mean the, the, it, that dopamine hit. It it feels pretty good, but what has it done to our discourse? Okay, I mean I you know the, it's it's one of those things where, and I sound like some antiquated grandpa, but I'm just like social media uncorked something in human nature that had always been there, and there's no way to get it back in the bottle, and and it has it has uh, in many ways crippled our social evolution mm -hmm. i don't know how we get i don't know how we undo it there's no unringing the bell you know right and i think we're talking mostly twitter and facebook right in terms of the well stuff we're referring to I, like instagram and tiktok I, I, are whole different beats they right? have a different set of problems yeah. right yeah. but so so that's certainly that they're adjacent yeah. to mm -hmm. to the the problems but yeah if we, if we talk about specifically say twitter as a as a as a driver of discussion right number one that's a problem because news anchors will be like well here's what people are talking about on twitter and i'm like well people on twitter talk about a lot of stuff that doesn't matter to anybody that's right but that's number one number two uh, and and you can never convince me otherwise donald trump became president because of his twitter account mm -hmm. and when you draw that chain of causation, you say, "Well, that's gosh darn terrifying." The fact that, that happened. You could actually say, "I remember. I remember hearing in 2012, they say Obama, the the Democrats were had figured out Twitter. I remember hearing that the Democrats and, and Obama had figured out Twitter because it was this new thing mm -hmm. and they had young 
yeah. volunteers, and they had they had figured it out prior more so they, than Mitt Romney, and that's how they won that election. I think they figured it out in, in in the sense of raising money. I don't I don't I don't think it was still being used quite like the way the Trump campaign, yeah. and 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 of course Trump as president used Twitter. Yeah, I mean Trump Trump figured out that yeah. I can just say whatever I want on here, yeah. and it'll get covered, right? right? So he cut through the filter and the gatekeepers and all, and and it's. Uh, you know, in, in my media class last week, I was talking about it. I was like, I was like, we use the the phrase gatekeepers a, as if it is p- a purely negative thing, right? And and you realize there is utility in that, you know, like when something is deemed worthy of airtime, when it's deemed worthy of column inches in a newspaper. Well, there's there's a set of uh, checks and balances that it's gone through to say, well, this is news, right? And we just when we just sort of uh, uh, just lay it all open and say, no, no, every everybody. Can just put it all out there, and and we'll just let the the information economy duke it out. Well, our our emotional maturity is not there yet. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I think I think you can you can draw a connection. I mean, because think about it, Facebook was around, uh, uh, you know, for a good several years before it sort of became what it was. And That's I right. and, and I think the connection is it was not merely Facebook; it was Facebook plus smartphones mm-hmm. and apps that put it in the hands of everybody. So true. And, 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 and this is going to sound diminutive, but the IQ dropped (laughs) in terms of what people felt like they, they, they needed to say. And, and, and and you see how, and, and just narrowing this purely to politics, how, you know, uh, people scale politics in a, in a very personal way. So they're kind of, they'll take, uh, first-hand experience or anecdotal experience over data, over empirical, measurable, yeah. scaled-out data. Right. And you see how lopsided that can be and how easily misinformation transmits uh, in, in this day and age. Because, right. again, there's, there's no, again, there's no gatekeepers, mm-hmm. right? And, and when the I, – I think that's a really astute point. When, because when the, um, like the standards are such that facts don't matter, it's more like you said, it's, 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 it's about what, how you make people feel, what people right. feel, uh, it, it's individual, emotive, then, then, you know, that, that also is part of the, it, part of what contributes to the ill effects of social media. I mean, where, I mean, think about it. Think about pre-social media. There were plenty of instances where people were like, oh, you know, a, a friend of mine had this thing happen to them and you know what I heard, right? A lot of that. Now, we're still there, but now you have the ability for that piece of misinformed uh, gossip or whatever it is to spread just exponentially. That's right. I mean, because I, I mean, two things come to mind. One, um, 9-11. I mean, I remember right after 9-11 and, you know, a lot of people had, I mean, conspiracies started, you know, there was conspiracies, conspiracies abound. Um, but you're saying that social media then, you know, what would it, what, if 9-11 would have happened today, then those conspiracies go viral, as it were. Well, well I mean, we don't because, need to think in the abstract. Look no, at COVID. Well, and then the other example I wanted to also quickly bring up was, um, because it's also very timely, so is COVID. And I want to come back to COVID because I think COVID is important to segue into the, the other thing I want to talk about, um, is is the Sandy Hook and, and Alex Alex Jones. Yeah, so when, when, when Alex Jones made those comments about Sandy Hook, it was largely relegated to people who listened to his, right. to, to, to InfoWars, which yeah. at that time maybe used social, like, again, social media was still it was in its infancy, infancy yeah. correct. Um, and the reason, of course, it's timely is because he got, you know, what he, he has fines of near a billion dollars to pay out and, the and look look how much damage emotional damage that's right and physical damage his his army of acolytes caused right oh absolutely uh, you know here's uh, tangentially connected to sandy hook here's an experience that i had uh when the the, the events of sandy hook happened remember this is a friday right it was like friday yeah. morning right. uh that's all everyone's talking about on the news the next morning so saturday morning uh, I was up early. This 2014? Like, when was this? 2012. 2012. 2012. It's 10 okay. years ago this year. Yeah. Uh, so I was up early Saturday. This is like those days when there was just, uh, my, my kids were all little, so they would actually sleep in, and I had like my Saturday mornings to myself. I was just up, and I'm drinking chai, whatever, and I was online, and I'm I'm on Facebook. Now, this is Saturday morning, right. the day after, and somebody goes, oh, here's what Morgan Freeman said about the Sandy Hook shooting. 
I was like, oh, well, let me see what Morgan Freeman said, you know? And it's this thing like, oh, the problem isn't gun control and we need people control and blah, blah, blah. It's just like this long thing, right? Any, so, mention, <clears throat> any mention of Morgan Freeman without doing the voice just isn't. <laughs> Come on. Well, well, there's a reason. Because I was, well, I read that and I was like, wow, that's a nice, thanks, Morgan Freeman. And that was my first thought. And then I was like, wait a minute. Like, when did Morgan Freeman say this? Right? Because the shooting happened yeah. on Friday morning. Right. This is already being spread Saturday morning. I'm like, he's not out promoting a movie. He doesn't have a blog. So did some reporter just like show up at his house? Mr. Freeman, what do you think about Sandy Hook? And he's like, well, come on in. Let me tell you about gun there control. Go. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Andy Dufresne. <laughs> Andy Dufresne <laughs> crawled through. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I was like, that makes no sense. I was like, I was like, there's no way Morgan Freeman said right. that. So now I'm like, well, I need to find out. And I'm up. I got my, I got my chai. I'm like, I'm like wired now. So I'm like, googling you know i'm like copying phrases from this and and i'm going from one link to the other link to the just trying to to following the trail of breadcrumbs okay one person's social media feed to another to another like that and finally after about half an hour 45 minutes i actually i find the source and spoiler alert it was not morgan freeman it was in fact some guy i don't know his name okay and bear in mind the thing that was written was like totally fine right i mean i'd say it was a little banal but whatever it was fine right totally fine but it was not morgan freeman that's my point and this guy posts this thing here's what i think about sandy hook here we go and people are commenting this is on facebook people are commenting oh this is great oh can i share it oh can i share it and the guy the author says you can share it but i'll tell you what's gonna happen somebody's gonna say betty white or morgan freeman said it and it's gonna go viral Wow. And within 12 hours, that's exactly what happened. Now, the person who... I wonder who, why those two in particular... It wasn't even some, like... It wasn't even some guy who, like, looked like Morgan Freeman and then, nah. and then some some other guy who... But, but we attached those names because, yeah. well, gosh, Morgan Freeman and Betty White, they just make us feel nice, right? Ah, and Right? And and the, 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 the epilogue to this is I told the, the person who had initially posted this on my Facebook... I just, I, 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 I even, I messaged them. I didn't post it like under the, I was like, Hey, just as a heads up that that wasn't Morgan Freeman. Like, I don't know, you know, you, you should probably know that. And they said, I don't care. I still agree with it. So you, you didn't, so you didn't tat and you don't respond, repost him and call him out. No, shame him exactly. I, didn't, I, I figured, <laughs> let me not do that, but just, I'll just let him know. But the response was so telling, right? I don't yeah. care. I still agree with it. And, I'm, and I, w- I was like, well, okay, well then, I mean, we're, we're kind of doomed then, right? Because that's it's all about like, well, I don't care about the facts as long as it makes me feel good, right? There you go. And and so look at the ten years between then and now. I mean that that has only increased, right? right? Exactly. That and 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 uh, you know we live in an age of alternative facts and everything else. Right. Again, I said this earlier. Like, how do you unring the bell? Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. think you can. Right. Right. And I think. I mean, I think the damage that the four years of the Trump administration caused and, and you know, and just sort of um, further, uh, you know, those fissures were already there, obviously. Yeah. Those cleavages were always, are already there. However, I think with Trump playing into that, right. you, you weaponizing yeah. those fissures, um, that's, I think, what has, you know, and, and going to your point about COVID, um, you know, then, of course, the pandemic hits and yeah. Now you already have the groundwork. You already the, the, the ground's already fertile for the kinds of sort of crazy, you know, outlandish conspiracies and 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 of course deplatforming. Going to Omar's point about canceling voices that were um, that presented an alternative view certainly caused. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't I don't agree with that because I think now, for example, things have come to light that. You know where what, what was once consp- considered conspiracy is now sort of understood science. So, and I give like by way of example, you know Pfizer very recently um, has 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 you know um, uh, I guess I don't want to say confessed, but but Pfizer is saying that the vaccines were never tested for transmission, and yet you know a lot of what occurred around mandates and so on was. Uh, with the idea that the vaccine would prevent transmission. So you see like where, and, and there were doctors, credible doctors who raised that as a concern, but they were quote unquote canceled because they were, you know, presenting an opinion that wasn't part of the official narrative. But I see, I think, and I recognize that because I, I read that thing, yeah. I know what you're talking about, but, yeah. but the problem is 
you know, they say a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. For right? sure. And for I sure. think that there was some acknowledgement that these little pieces of information bereft of context were likely to cause more harm than good. Okay. So, but someone made a decision then. Well, I think people need to make decisions. This this goes to what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes, uh-huh. I I think the notion of just let's just open the floodgates and ah, let it all out I there. I think mean. I think that too can be dangerous. And and look, I'm I I'm a journalist. I take the, that you know the, the the that trust very seriously. But it's just, you know, it's even a, a, it's a cause of journalists mm. to say sometimes, sometimes the, you have to weigh for the greater good. For, you... Is it, am I causing more harm by revealing this mm-hmm. right now? Okay. You know, and I, and I, without getting into the specifics of what you're describing, I think that was a calculus that definitely went into it okay. because it was mass hysteria uh, online in terms of the fear mongering and everything else. Right. On on both sides of of uh, of the COVID divide, but I mean, certainly, can we say that things would be better off if people, a, a plurality, a, 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 an overwhelming majority of people, did not get vaccinated because they misinterpreted the piece of information you cited? Mm, good point. I think that's I, and and that's has gotten lost because again, the the same people who were, you know. Um, questioning vaccines and things like that now use that bit of information to say see i told you so like, right exactly yeah, you know and so it just it, it, it vindicates them or at least in right. their minds you know uh, i i think of did you have a zucky didn't you have a case where you were trying to get something done through a phone number and whatnot and only when you tagged the company on social media <laughs> Did you get your? What oh, you needed? Yeah. Was it a moving company or something? No, like it was that? insurance. No, it was it was insurance, insurance. for a, for a, a storage unit. Yeah, and, uh, and so that's an tell that story real quick because it might it, it what it what it does is it points out I think of essentially even companies are listening without data, and in in this case it was good because it yeah. gave you good customer service, but that but then they may also do something like cancel an employee or something like that based on like, you know, a small number of people complaining and sometimes valid. Don't get me wrong. But I think that was a pretty interesting story that, that, that shows how powerful and how, how voices can be amplified on social media that don't actually represent the data. Right. In a good way in this case, but still, well, yeah. So I had a, I had a storage unit at uh, public storage, the literal actual worst. And, (laughs) (laughs) um, and I had, I had, an entire collection, like a, like several decades worth of collectibles and things like that that were stored there. So kids, don't put your collectibles in a storage unit. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. Learn learn from me. Uh, and and during the pandemic, in the initial period of the pandemic, I stayed away from my storage unit. I would check in every couple months, but I just like, this yeah. is out of safety. And then I I go in there, and uh, I mean the whole place it was cleared out. Yeah, I mean, just emptied out. So you just took a sledgehammer, broke the lock, and took no, everything? no, no. They didn't do that. Like what? that, that that would have been slightly better. It was this the amazing design of the storage locker itself was such that whoever this this uh, uh, this person who did it, they were able to just unscrew the latch uh, off of the door frame, and my lock was still on it. Mm-hmm. So it could just open the door right up. My lock was still on it, and they just cleared it out at their leisure. You know. So I go, and, I mean, the whole thing's gone. So Did you so, suspect like an inside job to, to be able to know? Not, not so much an employee, mechanism. but somebody who had a unit yeah. in, you know, because you, you need a code to right. get in and out. So yeah, somebody, and they had a, the time to do it, you know? And so again, I my jaw just hits the floor, whole thing's empty. And I go and I, t- I talk to the person who's who's like, working the the place and they're like they're very helpful they're giving me all the information they're like you might have some trouble uh, uh with with the insurance because they've they've had trouble they, they've given uh, people trouble in the past paying out because people have to prove their loss and i'm like prove their loss it's not like there's a thing or two missing the whole thing's empty why would i be paying for an empty storage locker right so <laughs> I, I you know they gave me the number for the insurance whatever and i i call and i set up the claim and i get an email right away they're like just submit this form with itemize this i'm like okay fine and then i just don't hear anything and i was given the number of like my the agent who'd been assigned and god is my witness i'm convinced this person does not exist because i never once spoke to them right 
And so maybe like two weeks later, I'm like, hey, just checking in about my claim. What is you're doing? Nothing. And then like another couple weeks later, hey, just following up about the claim. I <laughs> hope you're doing well. You know, like I'm just like being the nice guy. And I, I, I in my Google calendar, I marked it down every single mm-hmm. time I called. And it was like a good eight or ten calls. Yeah. That's how long it went. And finally, I'm like, what in the world? You know, I'm not getting anything from them. And I'm like, this is pretty straightforward, right? I'm not like, give me what the, everything it's worth, which is far beyond the insurance amount. I'm like, just give me what I'm insured for. So finally, after several months of this, literally it was about five months, I'm like, you know, I didn't want to do it, but I'm like, I've got like a decent number of mm-hmm. followers on Twitter, right? And then I'm not trying to flex with that, but I'm like, you know, maybe the, I can sort of leverage, leverage, leverage. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, so I'm like, Psh, here you go. Here's pictures of like my unit that was just cleared out. You know, public storage has not returned my calls. I haven't done anything. This is, this is not not uh you know not a good thing that's happening and i this was in the evening and at night i did this and by morning it had blown up you know i got several hundred shares by morning and at that point i call like not even that person who was assigned to me but like the main number i'm like all right i waited this time i put you on blast on social media i want somebody to call me right now and take care of this and no joke within an hour somebody called me and this was a friday morning by monday the money was in my account it was Amazing. in my account. So yeah. it took four days to solve something that for five months they yeah. sat on. Mm. So so the reason I thought that's 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 a super interesting and I'm glad you got something hopefully out of it. Um, but it shows like at the end of the day, maybe a couple hundred, five hundred people retweeted it, right? Yeah. And and you got people to act, right? Mm. And that's that's a good that's a good end result. Could also have, could also go in the negative, which yeah. you get, which is why you get sometimes cancel un, un, yeah. unjust cancellations, right? Right. But it, and I'm not saying all cancellation it, cancel culture yeah, this, is bad. This, but this is the know. thing, right? Like I I think the 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 term cancel has sort of become a very big brush. Well, there's two terms. I think there's there's cancel, and then another uh, one that really gets me is, is is this woke, the term woke. Well, woke used woke to be a isn't. positive term. It, it used to be. It's to become be. weaponized, yeah, of course, and like all this stuff. Does, it used to be a really positive term when it, when it first I'm came out, right? To, yeah, but I'm saying both of these terms, cancel and woke, have become sort of catch-alls for everything that you don't like, basically. Yes. Or at least with Oh, woke. okay. So you're, 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 yeah, you're saying that the weaponization of the term woke by people who are against anything, DEI, and well, they're, I, and they're I, basically I, like, I, yeah. it's, a, it's a catch-all, yeah. weaponized catch-all. Right. Yeah. I think I think the problem is the problem is twofold. It's it it, there there is woke weaponization from both right and left. Oh, for sure. And and that's the problem because I think the vast majority of people in the middle are just doing their best and and to to not be offensive. And sometimes Mm. some somebody's going to say the wrong thing without you know. I I saw uh, an interview that that uh, President Obama gave actually just just recently where he was talking about exactly this thing where we have to allow room and i'm paraphrasing we have to allow room for people who want to improve to not be penalized for their progress Mm, and in terms of oh you use the wrong word yeah that's the wrong pronoun you know and and i'm not i'm not mocking or diminishing pronouns and things like that but that's kind of my point because that's become the thing right Mm. and and it's like well if if this if this is a cultural change we're going through, we at the very least we can try to understand it without demeaning it, but also recognize that you know people are going to stumble a little bit, and that can that's okay. There was a there's a Google exec um, a year ago in the past year I think he's a Egyptian guy I think he's Egyptian, and he wrote this and he's he was very well respected. He founded a company called Cloudera. Uh, and I worked with him at, at Google, uh, Yahoo. I didn't know him too well, but you know, I've, I've had lunches and whatnot with him, um, so kind of knew him, I guess. But regardless, he about a year ago posted something on his blog about how he used he he was basically confessing that he used to be anti-Semitic, and he has since come a long way, and he's realized like as an you know as an Arab, uh, he he and as a human he could do better. So he was like it was like a confession and a and uh, striving to do better, and he ended up getting basically uh, let go from Google. From Google, yeah. And again, there's probably more to it that I don't know, but um, and that's a, it's a really interesting. It's a yeah. case of somebody who was at the, as far as 
what what I heard about. He was trying to do trying to yeah. essentially be better, right? And he kind of confessed to something that's no, but that really speaks to very exactly sensitive. what Obama said. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's beautifully, you know, yeah, the be- sort of beautifully illustrates that. It also reminds me of. I remember in the wake of, and I don't remember what particular scandal within the Muslim community around spiritual abuse, um, and and you know it was a religious scholar who was basically accused, or, or there were accusations made, and I think at that time Dr. Jackson made uh, wrote a piece that Alim was on the Alim website, so I think you can still find it on Alim on Alim pro- program online. I think is their website, and you can still go back and look at previous um, you know thought pieces written by their um, by their scholars. And Dr. Jackson, said, you know the the you know he talked a little bit about the about the issue, if you will, or or, or the allegations, but he was making a broader point around you know what. It, the danger of what does that say about us as a community when we don't allow the pathway to redemption or forgiveness to be, you know, to, 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 to not make that as easy as possible. Like mm. it, are we can't, you know, like does a public mistake or an acknowledgement in this case, um, you know, should that lead to the doors of salvation and redemption, Toba even mm. being her- hermetically sealed for mm. you? Yeah. Um, and, and I think that really, I mean, no, but I, but I think all of that, all of this kind of sp- speaks to, um, the, uh, the, 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 same essential point, which is, you know, again, you know, we reward, I mean, essentially bad behavior online. I, th- is it, you know, it's, it reminds me of, um, like so they people, were, people who uh, act, sorry, like impulsively, do you, I, I, I don't want, I don't want people to misconstrue what I mean by you know, bad behavior is rewarded, but I hope you understand kind of what I mean by that. I think Ducky. so. Yeah, yeah. Um, people who act, you know, like you wouldn't act like that, you know, in polite dinner conversation. Sure. But to be, you know, loud and, and obnoxious, like that gets rewarded because that is what leads to... Well, I mean, to, that's the, but that's the algorithm, right? No, that's, that's what that's drives... That's what I mean. That's yeah. what drives engagement. And, you know, at some point, you just have to stop feeding the beast, right? Because right. I, th- I think that... You 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 spend enough time on 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 Twitter or whatever, and you're yeah. just like, there's people there who just who are trying to say something right. to to chin up reaction to whatever right. whatever right. it could be about. Oh, Steven Spielberg sucks or something like that, and people are like, Ugh, no, he doesn't, you know. And I'm like, you you reach a point where you're like, why do I need to respond to this, yeah. right? And I think a lot more people need to to recognize that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because. The presumption many people make, and I would say it's an erroneous presumption, is that many of these disagreements are good faith disagreements. Right. And I would argue that the vast majority are not. That you're, it's an engagement trap, and you're just you're you're um, you're springing the trap. Gotcha. Mm. Like I mean, you know what I mean? Like like, how many times in your life, in real life, not online life, have you heard somebody? Not even somebody you're engaging. Somebody you hear somebody say something that you disagree with. Are you like, hold on, let me insert myself into this conversation, explain to this person why they're wrong? No, you're like, well, that was kind of dumb, and you keep walking, yeah. right? Well, I think we need a keep walking mentality when it comes to social media. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Some of it, some of it, I think, is stop this person from saying that dumb thing. So, ne- like, never again, right? Nobody else will say it again. It's like like basically deterrence oh, right, right. I, I think some of his deterrence it's 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 um you I mean the analogy is like a government right that basically uh squashes, deter, squashes something like dissent. At a dissent in order to st- deter it deter okay. that behavior from happening and it's like out of fear right like uh, I, I mean, know, that's a whole nother conversation I, no, but no, no. you know i think, but I think exa- that's yeah sorry go ahead uh, yeah. real quick yeah mm-hmm. i mean the example that you gave of of the person who ended up mm-hmm. losing their job or whatever mm-hmm. now you said that their initial admission mm-hmm. what that was in an article that they yeah wrote? this is uh, his name was amr awadala mm-hmm. he's the he was uh, at yahoo and google cloud and he was the founder of cloudera okay. and uh he was at google he's like a VP, something pretty pretty yeah. senior. And yeah, he wrote on his blog, he was like, hey, I used to be anti-Semitic. These are all the things mm. I used to think. I want to be, I'm trying to be better. I've come a long way. But he basically, because he used to be anti-Semitic and, and, and which is so obviously that seems bad. Wrong. That seems wrong right? to me what happened, right? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, on the other hand, the other side of that is people put stuff on social media oftentimes, and this was not that, so I'm making a distinction, but people yeah. put things on social media that later comes back and bites them in the Well, I was going to say, analog to that would be like Kevin Hart not being able to host the Academy Awards or whatever yeah, it was so, because of past tweets. So, so or, but that, that's a good example, right? Yeah. So Kevin Hart, he gets the, he gets the, the, uh, the Oscar. Well, let me, let me yeah. throw in one more example because I wonder if this is similar. Um, uh, what's his name? God, Guardians of the Galaxy director James yeah, Gunn. James Gunn, James Gunn yeah. who was who was taken off the product project and then put back on. Put back on after right. a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So similar thing though. Past but, tweets. But, but but see, like the Kevin Hart situation, that's a good example. Right? Okay. Because because he gets the job, he's yeah. very excited. Hey, I'm getting the job. And then what happens? People start spelunking into his tweet history. That's a, a new societal thing. That's a problem. Fair enough. However, they find that he tweeted stuff like, if I saw my kid playing with a doll, I'd hit him and say, stop, that's gay. I look at that and I'm like, okay, well, you didn't have to say that. Like, you could have just not said that. You know what I mean? Okay. So, so should he have gotten canceled for it? No. But I'm like, you're a grown adult saying a, a really dumb thing for no reason. You know what I mean? And th my point is this. It, it's weird how social media has instigated this need. I just got to put something out there. I, you know, I saw a thing, this is after the, after the slap, the slap heard around the world where, where yeah. Will Smith defended his wife's honor. Right. And oh, everybody's talking about that. Oh, yeah. right? So I saw somebody on Twitter who said, I was thinking of chiming in on the Will Smith slap, but then I looked at my hands oh, and yeah. I saw that they're white. So I'm just going to listen. And I said, well, you, you, you said that, didn't you? You, you? you sure needed to say that. You put that out in the world, didn't you? Right, I mean, well, come on, you know what I mean? Right. This, it's it's like no, you just gotta like yeah, yeah. you gotta check your little box. No, I, I chimed in on this. It's performative. It, it is. It's, it's performative wokeness. Wokeness. It is. It's performative right? wokeness, and I think this is what like I I know Bill Maher. I mean, you know, I, I get you know, you know, like we can agree or disagree, but I know he he really you know one of the things he really likes to talk about among others is, is certainly that about the kind of performative it wokeness. It is. It's all and and yeah. and and the and the propensity for that to occur or for those who do that kind of stuff from, you know, being predominantly for folks on the left, um, I think it, it raises a real interesting question around what that says about the kind of, you know, rise of, you know, MAGA but, but, and, but and, look and this at, kind look of at reactive. How these are, look at how yeah. these are two extremes that yes. feed off each other because you have this complete walking on eggshells on this side and then the I'm just going to, uh, oh, my pronouns are yeah. screwing you or whatever, you know, like just be, because th there are two extremes that are feeding off each other. Exactly. But in, in going back to the idea of trouble and, and uh, the vast majority of people are in that great wide open middle who are like, look, I just, I, I'm just doing my best. I don't want to inadvertently offend anybody. And, That's you know, it. I think for our listeners, I mean, I, I, this has been a, I mean, this has been a great conversation, but I, I want to, you know, I, I, I brought it up because I don't think it's just abstract or theoretical or, you know, just talking about social media or conversations that occur on Twitter writ large. Uh, I think the very same, a lot, like everything that we've talked about plays out, going back to Omer's sort of point, um, and you, you know, uh, demurring, which is, around Muslim Twitter. This, mm -hmm. this ex the kind of <laughs> tribal stuff that we've been talking about is exactly what I see on, 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 on Muslim Twitter. And I think, even, I mean, come on, I think if you're, if you're being fair, Zucky, like you, you may not dive in, but you're certainly an observer. Here's the problem I see, and this is purely anecdotally, I don't proclaim any great uh, experience with Muslim Twitter, but we have given follower counts uh, the equivalents of of uh, sheikhdom, so if pe so, in other words, we're imp imputing uh, uh, credibility to people who may have no background or basis in anything, but they happen to have a high follower account. People are like, oh, listen to this person, and people who are, uh, you know, uh, shaping the discussion in a way that's completely alien to me from the '90s and 2000s, where it's like, you know, the the, mm. the like the. I mean, I, I, where where like Sheikh Hamza okay. is oh he's one of they them those and 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 really criticized for things that are outside his frame of reference because social media is just not his space right okay and so that that's the problem I see with most a lot of Muslim Twitter is uh, 
there's people who who are being given credibility who really have not earned. But you said these same people are shaping the conversation. I'm kind of curious because I mean, I, I mean, I know you're being a little reticent to share maybe name names, but I'm I'm trying to understand like as again someone who is an observer, like who exactly are you referring to? Well, I'm not going to say anyone specific, right. and, and not. I'm just I I can't think of anyone sure, off sure. the top of my head, honestly. Sure. But but, um, I think. We talked earlier about how the engagement algorithm works, right? So the, the, the tweets that are shared the most, that are QT'd the most, right, quote tweeted, replied yeah, yeah. the most, those are the ones that get seen the most. And so sure. it ends up driving the discussion. Sure. Fair enough. That's just a reality. Okay. 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 I, okay. Fine. Fair enough. So, m- m- for, for the, so Muslim is, so Muslim Twitter, <laughs> I've, we, I've I've heard this term a lot. I don't know if it's ever has it ever really been quote, defined like and and. I mean and, no, and, but the, then again, neither has Black Twitter. Neither is you know l- like yeah. I mean, are we talking about like okay, but you have like the Ak right? If, if and you know, you, you have, know. I think it's one of those. It's things. one of those. Okay. If you know, you know. And I think, but no, but you mentioned the Ak right. I think, I I think going back to and then my argument about it being so tribal. I think you do have sort of the, the, this kind of tribal, uh, you know, or. or uh, this kind of tribalism that, that 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 you see on Twitter between people who may be defined as the Ak right, right, or characterized as the Ak right, versus on the other hand, um, you know, people who are uh, left of center, certainly, and 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 you know, and I think, like Zucky said, you you've got these two sort of polar opposites. Um, and then, but the vast majority of Muslims are sort of operating in the middle there. I guess what my they, question is, yeah. it's more of a question is, mm-hmm. is Muslim Twitter just, is it the same kind of like, same categories as the rest of Twitter? Like, yeah, more yeah. or less. It, for sure. I, think, I think you have yeah. the same dynamics playing out same exactly. dynamics different for sure. topic areas, okay. but yeah. th- this tribalism, I mean, it, well, I think the topic areas, interestingly enough, there are some, if, if this was a, like, if we, if we draw a Venn diagram, there is overlap between conversations that, you know, get polarized even on quote unquote mainstream Twitter. So sure, COVID sure. is a great example of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think gender is, is another one. Gender mm-hmm. identity is another one of those issues that you, you do see the kind of like polarized responses. Um, and I think those two particular issues in particular, like those two particular issues, at least from just anecdotal evidence yeah, and what I've seen. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. That sounds about right. COVID, yeah. lockdowns, masking, you know, vaccinations and so on, and then also gender identity, gender, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. So so I think those are the two ones that I see, two issues that I see really I'm trying play to think out. If there's a and third all of these fourth. things, the, 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 the... Well, the war in, the, I, w- I would say the war in Ukraine is another one that I see that, that, that has really become very tribal on Muslim Twitter in terms of those who... Um, much like that, you know, like essentially align with the left and say, you know, the, the, that Ukraine is justified and mm. and, and resisting Russia and so on. And then you have the right, which basically blames, you know, Ukraine and 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 uh, you know, like essentially, you know, s- sides with Russia on that. Interesting. So, yeah. So I think I w- if there is a third, it would be that. But uh, the the connective tissue with all three is these are nuanced discussions exactly. that require. Uh, the totality of 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 interpersonal context mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to to work through and and reach understanding and not and when they're being uh, when these are arguments that are being had without all of that context and they're being done not for mutual understanding but for their respective audiences you're not going to get anything accomplished yeah yeah I mean you're not um so at at, at the risk of uh, at the risk of uh, uh, Maybe having this also deferred, um, I'm going to just raise in, 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 in sort of as and we can close out with this because we're, we're, here, here, here we are, all three of us. Um, I'm the father of two daughters. Omar's is the same. You, Zucky, you have you know four four sons uh, and a daughter. Um, so awesome. I mean, you know, as, I guess as comfortably as we can navigate this issue of a gender identity, which is an issue that 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 does. <laughs> <laughs> in 30 seconds Let's no no no, no it doesn't have to be 30 seconds yeah. i'm just curious like you know whatever you're comfortable sharing you know how, how is it that you've been able to kind of navigate that conversation on a broader level with your children i mean i'm just really you know really i think curious. that's that's 
I think that's because, and, and a whole. I, I say this. Sorry, I, I say this. Just also acknowledging that all of us have day jobs. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and so and obviously this is public consumption. Yeah. So I no, wanted, I mean I'll, what my, what what um, I don't even I don't even go there because it's so nuanced with my kid. I just I focus on love and mercy uh, those aspects like obviously love your neighbor and be kind to everybody. So I mean my my daughter had a in in elementary school she had a transgender classmate and friend really and and it was totally fine um so no no as a what hmm? pause when yeah. you say totally fine you can define what you mean by totally fine in terms of just what they were friends and i did yeah, right okay, it was okay, a non-issue it. it was fine right. it was yeah. it was um but the 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 bigger focus on the, the bigger focus for me is like zooming out uh, and I, my focus is on Muslim, I, their identity as a Muslim. I think that, I think, I think as I, I heard something, not in Muslim Twitter, but just online about like the best thing you can do for a girl is give her confidence. And I think that applies to Muslim kids or non-Muslim kids. Mm. Um, and then just like love of their Muslim identity a lot. Prophet Muhammad saw some like, if you can establish that, that's a win. I, I don't even, I don't think you need to even get into uh, well, for me personally yeah, that's my okay, sure, sure for me personally i'm like like you're getting into the weeds if you're if you start tackling the gender identity issues and all because it's, it's well i don't it, know how much so that's my two cents okay, because i'm just know. trying to focus sure, on sure. the basics right sure. so and, th and those are hard enough in the, this day and age right well my only pushback on that would be that i, I mean if you are talking about muslim identity mm -hmm. then this issue is certainly one that they are going to have to grapple with i hear you you know and so you. For me, you know, is this, so that would be my pushback on that. But I, I, I think, well, and I, yeah. if I can yeah. pick up on what, I think what Omar's saying is that he's he's approaching it less from tackling this specific issue than a, a grounding in empathy and that being enough to say, well, I just treat people like people. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying, I'm trying to definitely up-level and, and focus more on the essence of what it means to be a Muslim. I also, you know, as a, like, I, I, you know, I wonder like how short, you know, how you know, the, the length of my daughter's pants or shorts or whatever. I, I get into those concerns too, for sure. Those are like very like tactical or fiqhi or whatever, however you want to describe them. Um, issues. Issues, right? But, but every time I go there, I'm like, that's focusing on that is just not as effective it's not i'm not saying it's not important what i'm saying is it's the the focus and the foundation should be like as zaki said on do i love being a muslim do i love my religion do i love god my prophet right mm. if and and do i you know all those things if i can really and I'm, so i'm still working on those things because i think that's the foundation you, without that doesn't matter how all, all these other issues it's, you, then you have i think you have it backwards and again this is all just a work in progress for me but no, this is a the, work in progress yeah. for all of us yeah. i mean i mean i'm not i don't pretend to have all the answers i'm, yeah. I'm just in 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 and and my even my pushback on what you said is just to play sort of angel's advocate yeah if you will yeah you know right just to or devil's advocate right i mean it's, it's a play on words but um you know the, because i think there is one, you know, some who would say, well, I mean, how, how I, truly are you telling your children to love what God says and what I will, I'll answer God that. Prophet, I'll answer that right? with where I'm at today. And this is even different than where I was at a few months ago, right? Um, again, conversations through other parents who have maybe gone through parenting a little, you know, they're a few years ahead in the sense is while I was like, you know, be, 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 be a friend if you know whatever uh, to to this to to I mean, the, tolerate to the, show yeah. tolerance uh, more you know, more yeah so, no, was, I would say they're even friends right and okay, that was fine sure. but in in retrospect not don't be a friend to this person but it does matter who your friends are in terms of that Muslim identity right because if if the, if your friends love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that's different than if they don't know who he is right at at that young age and and I think that's a big lesson that I'm. You know that I, that that maybe I didn't know back then. It's it's it, um, it's not so much don't hang out with this person, but it is more about like curating the best possible friends for your for, for your for your kids with common values and whatnot. So 
it's not don't it's not that that person's bad and scary and no no and but, it's more like but you, but that level of engineering is only going to get you so far because like you said in middle school or in elementary school whatever and and, and my daughters are the same they, they she had a friend who was you yeah. know transgender yeah so like you, whether you curate for your daughters you know uh, you know friends who are going to be you know again right are are going to be positive influences yeah they're going to encounter it if they're especially if they're going to public schools yeah i hear you i yeah. I, I don't have answer i don't have that answer no, 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 i'm no, just I mean, yeah. yeah it's a tough one um, i i'm i think uh it's like uh you know bef- i feel like i'm gonna figure it out as soon as my my daughter leaves the house maybe i'll figure it figure it out a bit but now i don't have, i don't I, yeah it's it's you kind of just we're just, you know what i feel like as parents we're learning as we go oh, no, and we're this, totally and this, winging it and yeah we're winging we it it's because yeah. somebody was telling me recently it's like the issues that we that that we face, our kids face, so night and day different from um, kind of full but full circle with like you're talking about Sheikh Qaradawi, right? I mean, just think of the no, no, for the sure. issues that that we were facing then, and very no. almost black and white, simple compared to now, right? I, it, it connects if you if you see what I'm saying. No, no, it, it connects, and I, I would say the, the questions that our children are, are grappling with. Yeah. are existential in nature yeah. is my point yeah. and not fiqhi yeah. like niceties like again going back like i mean like, i remember like the issue of music or mar- of, marshmallows or you know yeah, well yeah, yeah, yeah. like dietary yeah, dietary, dietary right? or or music and and so on arts yeah. and uh, you know yeah. culture those were and, and and we sought answers and we got them from mm. sheikh qaradawi's book lawful yeah. and prohibited yeah. you're not going to find the answers to today's questions that yeah. our young people are grappling with in the lawful and prohibited. Is I don't. My point. I don't know. In fact, I I, I don't. In fact, clearly, they, in our, nobody go? has the clear. Like I haven't. Nobody has crystal clear answers because these things are changing so fast, right? Well, I think. I mean, okay. I want to be clear that people don't misconstrue what we're saying. There, there is some As level a, of crystal yeah, clearness yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of Fair what enough. normative Islam uh, teaches us about this issue let me rephrase that so, I, I agree with no, no, you. i hear I you don't want you I'm to get saying canceled. in the moment yeah no I, I, <laughs> in the and moment by extension this yeah. show yeah 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 exactly <laughs> what i mean by that is yeah. the situation that the average american muslim parent of a 14 year old is dealing with is like new territory that's what i'm yeah. trying to say okay, no, no. And, and even five years ago somebody who was 14 five years ago is different now Oh, that's what I'm trying to say. For sure. It's, so there's, that's what I mean by there's no answers. Obviously, yeah, I, I, well, I, 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 I hear your point specifically about specifically around this issue. Five years ago, the conversation was completely different. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are we are in new territory. Yeah, we are in new ter- new territory that was not even imagined ten years ago, or five, or that's right, half yeah. a decade. Yeah. So, yeah. so certainly, uh, I, Zaki. I mean, that you know. So uh, again, I'm not asking for a thirty second sound bite, but I mean, if you've as someone who teaches young people, obviously being a father of your own, I mean, how, how do these conversations, you know, like, do they come up and how do you, how do you navigate those? They have not come up as of yet specifically. Right. But my, my general approach has always been just trying to teach them empathy mm-hmm. and say, look, just, it's not your place to judge anybody. Oh, just, well, maybe a follow-up question then to you would be as, as, as a media critic and, 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 and seeing the kind of representation we see around these issues in popular television shows that our children all watch. Yeah. You know, any, I mean, you know, pretty much a lot of the recent output on Disney Plus. Yeah, right, Marvel. It, it, Marvel, right? right? Well, Disney Plus, right. It, yeah. Whether it's, yeah, um, you know, Disney, Disney, or if it's uh, Star Wars, or if it's Marvel, um, you know, you're... Our kids are watching it. So. I, I was, uh, and before you, I'll just jokingly say, I was like five years ago when I, when I got my daughter into Marvel, I was like, okay, she doesn't have to watch, like, she's going to watch Marvel. It's going to be all just like about good and evil. She doesn't have to watch like Hannah Montana or like, yeah, no, you, know, you. Uh, you know, some of the, some of the, some of the, all the, 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 the Disney stuff, the Disney stuff that, you know, is all about dating. And I was like, okay, she's going to watch Marvel. And then, and then of course, now yeah. we're in a, a, you know, in a different phase of Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, again, I, I don't mean to put you on this, but like I said, this was a purely organic conversation. None of this was pre-planned. And, and so, you know. Uh, I, you know, yeah. I, 
I look at this in the sense of even even these media representations, if if they put, you know, th- this this is all in the world regardless, and so if you're exposed to it in a way that allows you to not uh, to be to be empathetic towards people and to not judge people. I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. And so that's how I try to handle it. Does that make sense? No, it does. Yeah, so that's I, right. I like and that. and I like let me, let me, let me phrase it this way. Like I remember being in high school and you know, it was very common to, to, to use, you know, uh, the R word for mental illness very mm-hmm. commonly. Right. And that's something that now we, we, we know better. Mm-hmm. Right. And my sense is that even kids in high school know better mm-hmm. than, you know, and that's, that's like a positive change, you know, and there's other terms and things that were very common at one time. And that changed, right. Because, because part of it is we've grown empathetic, right. So if, if we embody empathy, I think, I think a lot of that stuff does kind of work itself out. I yeah. think, I think there's sort of, a panic around these things that's not particularly helpful. Mm. Oh, for sure. Uh, and, and again, it just becomes people digging in on opposite ends. And once again, here we have this big middle ground Mm -hmm. where most people are, you know, I think we can get into like, well, some of the media depictions seem to be maybe oversampling or, or, or perhaps overcompensating. And I don't know how productive that is necessarily. Um, but I think as a media professor, I'm I am kind of like, well, you know, this is this is the story of media. I mean, thing, you know, it's, okay, it, things things change. You know, I, I like uh, there was a time when Ellen DeGeneres was on the cover of Time magazine because she came out of the closet, and now people wouldn't bat an eye, right? And we can say that's a change that's either good or bad. I'm not getting into that, but I'm saying that's that's how it is. Change always happens, right? So we should just have to be aware of it and we have to be adaptable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, again, yeah, we, we, we don't pretend to have all the answers. I would just, like I said, wanted to pick, I don't pretend to have any answers just to be clear. <laughs> yeah. Wanted to just pick y'all's brains about it. Um, but, uh, uh, no. Uh, so again, Zucky, thanks for jo- rejoining us, uh, for this very special episode, the ninth anniversary. Um, as someone who's sort of, um, been here from the very beginning, I guess I could say, uh, that it, it, I, I can't believe it's been nine years. It, it doesn't feel like it's been nine years. Um, I catch myself sometimes saying, oh, you know, podcast going on our seventh year. I'm like, wait, no, wait a minute. It's been <laughs> nine years. Yeah, exactly. I did my math wrong. So, um, you know, but yeah, again, I want to thank our listeners for being there. I think from the very beginning for all of like the vast majority of our listeners. Um, and I want to thank both of you for being, you know, wonderful co-hosts and, 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 inter- and interlocutors throughout the, throughout that journey. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I couldn't have done it alone. I, I can't profess to be able to do this by myself. So to have this, you know, to, to have you two, uh, or in, in that order, uh, <laughs> as, as co-host has been, has been wonderful. Um, and it's also been great to just kind of keep it in the family. So, uh, which, which is what we are. Yeah, so. for sure. And it's funny. Uh, I think Zucky's name still shows up on the, uh, the icon. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's cool. Oh, does it really? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think on the thumbnail for iTunes for, for some of us. Yeah. It, oh, that's weird. It yeah. still says Zucky that. Hassan. Yeah. So, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's, uh, it's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, oh, it's, a, it's a reason yeah, to have you back exactly. regularly. I'm or, like Mufasa's ghost in, <laughs> yeah. in the line. Game. Or Omar's like, yeah, I see how it is. Yeah, I see how it goes. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was going to say, you, you, you were talking about like, we've come so far in empathy and, and I was I was like, weren't we just talking about Trump and Kanye? But that we'll save that one for a follow up episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Excellent. So, this is more like Bewitched and 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 the two and the two Darrens. Oh, there you uh, go. As, as opposed to, I, I don't want to turn this into Three's Company, where you know we, we have the revolving blonde. So, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or not the not even the revolving, um, just the, you know, just what it, like. Here, here I thought I was the, the jam. Turns line. out I'm the Chrissy. <laughs> you are the Chrissy. <laughs> the, fact that, the, yeah, I, the fact that we could probably name name yeah. all the characters tells us. Well, that's us what I mean. I, I want. I mean, if, if you're the Chrissy, then then then, then if Omer's the Cindy, I just don't want to have to worry worry oh, no, about he's a not Tracy. The Cindy. He's he's the Terry. Yeah, he's the Terry. 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 He's Terry. The Terry? Yeah. 
I said Tracy. So or I'm, yeah, I'm like the Mr. Roper, actually. Yeah, that's that's what's more applicable. Yeah, right, right. Mr. Roper and Don Furley. Furley. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Furley and Mr. <laughs> Roper. I like that. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, um, anyway, thanks a lot again, listeners, for for uh, for, for for listening. And uh, um, please, if you like what you hear, um, you know, uh, give us a five star rating. If you want more threes company talk? Uh, let us know. <laughs> exactly. We'll um, do a deep dive into the dynamics of Mr. Roper versus Mr. Furley next yeah, exactly. time. Well, yeah, we, we we didn't even talk about Star Wars, which I imagine a lot of the listeners probably thought we were going to get into um, having Zucky back on the show. Or Marvel. We'll, we'll we touched that. on Marvel, but we really didn't <laughs> talk about it. So. Ha- have me back. We'll, we'll, very, we'll get into it. In a very different context, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, feel free to li- please uh, reach out to us with any questions, comments, suggestions, diffusecongruence at gmail.com. Thanks, as always, for listening. And check us out on the next episode of Diffuse Congruence. Thank <laughs> you.